During the formulate goals and strategies phase of the MAP process, participants take strategic issues identified in the previous phase and formulate goal statements related to those issues. They then identify broad strategies for addressing issues and achieving goals related to the community's vision. The result is the development and adoption of an interrelated set of strategy statements. Goals and strategies provide a connection between the current reality, what the public health system and the community's health looks like now, and the vision, what the public health system and the community's health will look like in the future. During the formulate goals and strategies phase of the MAP process, participants take the strategic issues identified in the previous phase and formulate goal statements related to those issues. They then identify broad strategies for addressing issues and achieving goals related to the community's vision. The result is the development and adoption of an interrelated set of strategy statements. Participants begin by revisiting both the vision and the strategic issues. By identifying the strategic issues linked to the vision, participants develop goals that will be achieved when the issues are resolved, whereas the vision presents what the community wants to ultimately achieve in an idealistic manner. Example, healthy children. Goals capture these results in more concrete terms. Example, age-appropriate vaccinations for all children. This activity is best accomplished by a small group that later presents its results to the MAP committee for discussion. During this step, participants identify potential strategies for achieving goals and attaining the community vision. Several strategies should be identified for each strategic issue that reflect the range of choices from which the community may select to reach its vision. Strategy alternatives should build on strengths and opportunities and counter the threats reflected in the strategic issues. Small group brainstorming sessions are a good way to conduct this step. Next, the small groups continue brainstorming discussions to identify barriers to implementation. Barriers may take the form of insufficient resources, lack of community support, legal or policy impediments to authority, technological difficulties, and so on. Barriers will not necessarily eliminate strategy alternatives, but the group should alert the community to obstacles that may be encountered if that alternative is pursued. Here, small groups flesh out details related to implementing each strategy alternative. Participants should explore issues such as needed activities, timelines, participation, and resources. Thinking about implementation details at this stage helps to identify and refine the best strategies and lays the groundwork for the next phase, the action cycle. At this point, the best strategy alternative should become clearer. Participants should examine the alternatives to understand their relationships to one another. Understanding the relationships among strategies offers a comprehensive picture of the larger strategy that the community will implement to achieve the vision. Next, participants test the strategy alternatives against agreed-upon selection criteria. Once the strategies are selected, they should be adopted. A written planning report serves as a reference, tests consensus about agreements, and communicates the vision, goals, and strategies to partners and the broader community. Once the document is complete, it should be adopted by the MAP committee. This step marks the completion of the planning process and a time to celebrate the hard work. The plan should also be disseminated and shared throughout the community.